So when talking about the business of console and PC market today, there is a lot of pushback. A lot of people have their own personal beliefs. They believe strongly that specific things are going to remain the same way. However, the market has changed drastically. In fact, it was already changing and some events have just basically become a catalyst to the explosion of this thing that I thought about arbitrarily in 2018. I like to put this 2018 video thing in my videos because I believe strongly that the data was very, very evident in bringing me to that particular place. And what is this data that I keep talking about? Well, it is this particular video that I made about five years ago where I basically titled it and said, why Marvel Spider-Man should be on PC. In this video, I went about just looking at MPD data and MPD research. It's not my best video. I was still just starting to get the face camera thing and I was a little bit heavier than I am now. Oh, back in the days, I keep this video just so I can go back and make sure that I stay disciplined. There was a data set that I actually did cite in the video. I put a little text on it. I cannot find that data set. MPD has taken it down. But I think at that point they were trying to get subscribers and man, they didn't know they put out gold. And in this video, it said that 67% of you know gamers are US gamers across the board at the time. And then among the 67% of gamers, 54% of them were PC gamers. Somewhere along the lines of that is how the data set goes. If you want to watch the video, just let me know. I'll put it in the description for you guys. It's a little cringe for me to go back and actually just watch that stuff, uh, you know, from time to time. However, it's evident today that PlayStation no longer wants to ignore the PC market. In fact, it's so evident their newest game is going to have a PlayStation overlay and a trophy system. This has caused a huge ruckus. Everybody is running around on Twitter, the console warriors and fanboys with their hair on fire. Well, it's necessary that they do that because they have to react and overreact to be able to get their fans engaged so they can get engagement and all that stuff. Whereas we have just been talking about and arguing, by the way, on this channel about what we think were the merits and the demerits. Some of you, you've held your position that PlayStation is not going to bring its games day and date to the con to the PC platform, of which that is a very interesting conversation. We have to be very specific because day and date is already a thing. Helldivers 2 showed up on the very first day. In fact, we'd already have had the Predators game and we can argue about Helldivers being a live service game versus one of those in quote flagship games and all that. But let me come ahead and now make a video where I tell you that so-called flagship versus, uh, you know, live service is a whole load of BS. And I'll tell you why. So let's take a look at 2019 and let's take a look at the original articles that told us that PlayStation had 12 live service games in production. Before you jump on me, I know you're going to say, well, they cut the live service games. No, they cut the calendar in half, meaning they're going to release them a little bit slower. However, they're still bringing them to you. So read the headlines very carefully and then make the informed decision that I would love for us to come to in terms of conclusion. Anyways, I said decision, informed conclusion. PlayStation is betting on new franchises and live service games. There's a very interesting portion of this article. I'm not going to read the whole article to you. And that is the fact that the changes could have been even more notable for how Sony invests in what it calls traditional games. This is what you guys called the flagship games and the live service ones. But here is the change and the shift that's happened. In FY19, the split was 88% traditional games to 12% live service games. But in FY 2025, Sony expects that ratio to flip 40-60. A game like Helldivers 2 is a game that is being, or games like it are going to be receiving more investment. Hence, what you call flagship, PlayStation calls traditional, possibly old school. So again, the tables are turning so fast, people can't even keep up. If they have not been keeping up with what's been going on, a lot of people are going to either be surprised or pretend to be surprised. And I think this whole Ghost of Tsushima thing, I mean, the people who are going on and reacting about it on Twitter, they're making me laugh. I had a little conversation here because, you know, I'll just post like one, one or two things on Twitter, you know, now and, you know, again, because this is where you find a lot of people, right, that are hardcore gamers. Uh, Payo, or they say they are, we all just talk about stuff on Twitter now as to how hardcore gamer or whatever it is, that's all arbitrary. Payo said Sony is going all in on PC. They are now officially adding a PlayStation UI and trophy support to Ghost of Tsushima. PC trophies are officially a thing. 
They've been a thing. It's just some of the other games, they've just had Steam trophies. If they do day and date, this person says bring PS back home for all their titles. There's no reason to even have a console. Highly doubt that's their strategy. You guys are so tied to the box. You can understand that it doesn't matter where you're playing the game. Do you like the game? Play the game. And I said they already do day and date. And they said, please explain. So I put a Helldivers meme. And I said they officially launched a PlayStation exclusive on PC on the same day. And then they said they've announced time and time again. Live servers will be day and date. PlayStation will still be Sony's main focus for flagship titles. Then why are they moving 60% of the money that they had been investing into these so-called live service games? What is specifically the focus at this point? Possibly the focus is to continue to keep people, ooh, shiny, 3D, nice sky, beautiful game, so they can buy their console. However, they're going to be flinging money into investing heavily in the PC market so that they can get that share. It's literally talking out of two sides of your mouth because you cannot say PlayStation doesn't have day and date when they have a day and date game and then say that they're not really doing day and date because they didn't do day and date for a specific set of games. Does that make sense? And here's another challenge for all the people who basically think like this is a lot of these so-called day and date games. Anyways, they've gotten so expensive. PlayStation actually has to dive into live service, a very interesting place that it's not been its strongest. They can be strong there. Does that make sense? And so somebody said to me and they replied that my comment, they said they did it once. Let's not get too crazy. My guy, it is six or my gal or whoever you are. It is a 60%. It ain't coming once. It's coming times 12. <laughs> What's that article again? Where's the article title? It's, it's 12 of them are coming. They're doing it. They're going to do it 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 if they don't cancel any of these titles. And I replied to Beef Supreme over here and I said, we already went crazy. The sales genie is already out of the bottle. If you think PlayStation will let Microsoft play free on PC without resistance... <laughs> See what I did there? Then you might want to sit this one out. The fight just started after Activision acquisition. Guys and girls, PlayStation is going to fight this fight. They're going to compete. Do you see this? All the stuff that they did here, this was just a test. This two-year window is again, it's just informing the customer when they're going to get the product. Those who are saying, well, I want to play the game day one, it doesn't matter. Like, what, what is the point now? Instead of me just sitting and waiting where I can get a, 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 you know, a version of the game, with more functionality, ultra wide support. I'm not buying any PlayStation. The last one that I bought was Spider-Man 2. And even before that, I already told myself, well, okay, maybe I'll do God of War. But, you know, Spider-Man 2, I must I have a superhero, you know, segment of my channel. So I said, all right, let's go ahead and do it. But man, I'm not buying Wolverine day one. In fact, hopefully I sell my PS5 before then. And Tom Clancy's the division. Uh, you know, comes out with Division 3 and it's cross, you know, platform, cross play, cross save. It's over. I'll stick with PC and keep my Xbox as a dev kit. That's pretty much how it's going to have to go. That's basically the main reason I bought an Xbox. I didn't really buy an Xbox to play. Um, I, I basically spent enough time basically, you know, prototyping and researching how to basically replicate that console feeling. That's a whole different video for it's, you know, for you guys. But again, here are the PC requirements. 720p, 30 FPS. That's what we played Ghost of Tsushima on. Do you all remember? I beat that game at 720p, 30 FPS, and I had a monster PC, and I loved it, and I enjoyed the game. The game is phenomenal, and I look forward to getting the opportunity to play it again on PC. You got to understand, you got to like games at the end of the day. It never has been about performance. I've been telling you guys since Gotham Knights, gaming was never really about performance. It's just people wanted to shout and make noise. So they all pooped on Gotham Knights. Oh, it's 30 FPS. My dude, 30 FPS rocks, bro. <laughs> Coming from somebody who can play these things on whatever performance that, you know, we can get out of, we can squeeze out of there. The game is good is the main thing. I understand in today's day, there's an expectation for 30 FPS. I get it. I get it. But it's never really been a problem. I mean, 2019, we didn't have a 60 FPS, you know, braggy console. We didn't have that. And we liked games. We enjoyed games. But the moment they put it on the box, everybody lost their minds for like four years. And nobody can even look anymore at objective business practices to be able to draw what I think are good conclusions because everything is so convoluted by a lot of people who refuse or choose to ignore 
What is the reality? Why are these things happening? No one wants to ask the question. Everybody just wants to yell and talk and try to maybe one up the other person on Twitter and blah, blah, blah. I can't believe this person said I don't see hell divers as evidence of this when Sony has told them that this is exactly what is going to happen. How do you not see that this is already a thing? And I said, it's a thing. I don't expect expertise. You don't got to be a rocket scientist. They already do day and date. And then they said, again, I disagree that this is more than a one-time thing. And I said, they already confirmed that it's not a one-time thing. PlayStation will launch live services, live service titles on both platforms, flagship or no flagship. I don't think that matters in the grand scheme of software sales. And then they said, who cares about live service games? Hey. This kind of fanboyism really blocks the mind from exploring what the reality is. It's insane. It's I, like we have to call it out for what it is. Like sitting behind a Twitter handle and just spouting nonsense does not help anybody. This is important for some people. This is important for investors. This is important for gamers, some gamers, some segment of gamers. This is important for parents. Many of you right now are at the point where you probably want to gift your child a console during the holidays. I'm going to make that, you know, kid friendly PC build video very soon. In fact, I saw a comment. It's coming soon. <laughs> It'll be here very soon. And I said, man, they spent three billion dollars on Bungie. They're moving 60 percent of their R&D into live service games. I don't know what else to say at this point. I guess we're just going to wait and just see everything just happen the way we've already. Those of us who've been looking at the evidence, you're going to see it happen. Day and date is here. We're no longer in the point of, oh, they're not going to bring day and date. They're already here. The question now is if we're going to actually play Spider-Man on Xbox. Oh, oh, oh you forgot? <laughs> Steam may be coming to the Xbox console. All right. Let me leave that there. Peace out.